Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 41, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So let's crack on. Uh, first one is from Caltech and this is Leo the Flying Walking Robot, or Leonardo is its full name. Um, and as you can see, it can fly. Um, so how does it do this? It has little propellers on its arms, it has four little propellers. Um, now it kind of uses the propellers to keep itself stable, so that's why it walks a little bit gingerly because it's really the propellers are doing most of the work. It's not really putting a lot of weight on those legs, it's just kind of scooting forwards a bit. But it does mean that it can do cool things like, yes, it can fly, but it can also walk, walk on tight ropes, uh, it can ride on a skateboard, it can do things that kind of walking robots can't really do. So it's a sort of halfway in between. It's just less than a meter, um, so it's not exactly small, um, but it does come with a few um, problems which are trying to solve uh, in version two. So it can't carry much more weight than it's currently that it exists so it's kind of it can just about carry its own weight which is why it's quite thin um, and also it's not particularly efficient as well so when it walks it's using those fans quite a lot so the improvements for version 2 are to give it more sort of uh, load carrying uh, capacity and also to make its walking far more um, sort of leg based rather than using those fans to keep it up but I um, thought this was just kind of a, a neat evolution of where robots are going and I often joke for that Boston Dynamics kind of killer dog is probably going to be the last robot you see before it kills you. Uh, it might actually change my mind. It might be this one. Uh, it could be super creepy if they get this uh, to uh, anything more weaponized, shall we say. There you go. Uh, this is Leo. Um, Sky launched a TV. So this is big news. Uh, obviously, I work for Sky, so uh, just uh, going to declare that straight up front. But this is big news. Um, obviously, uh, this is straight after the Amazon announced their Omni TV last week or the week before. Um, so this is obviously a really hot space right now. The TV is very much alive. Um, so, yep, this is um, it comes in small, medium and large. So simplicity is really the, the, the name of the game here. Uh, comes in lots of different funky colors. So it's clearly a lifestyle choice for you if you want the blue or the, the, the stone color, whatever you want to do, that's kind of neat. Um, uh, it does not need a satellite dish, which is obviously a big departure from Sky. I clearly have now TV, so they already have a streaming server, but this is the first time it actually comes in, so it's a plug and play device, it uses Wi Fi. Um, actually, also comes with a camera that you can put on top of it as well, so you can use it to gesture control. It, it, was, it is already voice controlled, uh, but you can also have gesture control, but it, you can also then uh, use it with things like fitness apps where it can. Uh, help you doing your yoga poses, that sort of thing. So that's kind of neat. Um, and it's also the first device really you can just, um, I mean, it's a bit like radio rentals back in the day. Uh, you can actually rent it uh, or you can at least pay for it by installments um, rather than just buy it outright. Um, the three sizes, broadly speaking, 600 quid, 800 quid and 1,000 quid. Uh, so actually not a million miles off uh, what a phone costs, which is bonkers. There you go. So uh, Skyglass, uh, out from Sky, big news. Um, Ferrofluid. Always love a bit of ferrofluid in a dinosaur. So um, saw this a couple of months ago and it was a bit of an experiment, but now I've learned that uh, you could actually probably buy one of these soon. So um, what is going on here? So this is a music visualizer. If you could actually hear the music, then you would actually see this is pulsing along to the beats, um, which I think is pretty neat. Um, so this is a ferrofluid, so this is magnetic fluid. Um, it's basically kind of iron fluid um, suspended in an alcohol, clear alcohol, um, and there are probably uh, magnets around this thing which uh, can then pull it in different directions. So uh, this is neat. Um, I'd love to see this in you know, the equivalent of an Alexa or, or a voice assistant or something like that. It would make a really interesting personality for it. So if it's scared, it would be all spiky and if it, you know, whatever, I think that would be super, super neat. Um, I can also see this being used for sort of data visualization as well. If you could see you know, if it was kind of blobby in one area or it could get bigger or smaller or it could, you know, show you different areas, I think it'd be really interesting as a sort of a accessible visual data uh, device as well. So um, I'm finding that quite quite funky. Um, and also what I really like about this video is you can see the little jars of ferrofluid in the background that are funking along in the background, some sort of backstage uh, basically jigging going on, which I think is really neat. There you go. Um, Massive news last week was Facebook had an outage. Uh, most people will have noticed this. 
Um, I didn't, I was actually on the train at the time and I don't use Facebook, so there you go. <laughs> so, uh, but when I came off the train, uh, everything was lit up about this. So uh, they actually had an outage for five hours. So this took down uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, Oculus, um, to name but a few, and anything that really um, was owned by Facebook. They were all pinned into the backend systems um, of facebook.com and that was the problem. So the DNS servers, the domain name servers, which look up facebook.com and point you to the right server, they went they went offline. So there was an update that happened, somebody pushed an update uh, in the background, and that's what went wrong. So there was no hack, there was nothing malicious going on, it was just a technical error. Now this did have some fairly um, big ramifications. So uh, 2.8 billion people were affected by this on the various networks. Uh, there are lots of jokes that if you were on Oculus Rift at the time, uh, you were stuck in a virtual world, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, however, it did have some um, pretty significant effects for the 600,000 or 60,000 uh, Facebook employees. Um, everything was, all their internal systems, their email, they couldn't even report it because basically um, they couldn't actually send an email. They couldn't even get out of their office because their security cards are all tied into their top level domain as well. Um, and it also wiped off $50 billion of their stock price, which is a 5% drop. It's not really recovered from that either. Um, the Facebook uh, stock price has been going down steadily for the last month at least, um, and it didn't bounce back. Um, now what actually happened to the rest of the audience? So Facebook uh, saw their traffic pretty much go onto uh, Twitter. So Twitter um, traffic went up by 72% and the rest of the internet went up by uh, 36%. So this was basically all of Facebook and Instagram visiting news sites, trying to find out what was going on, but trying to f just do the normal stuff that they did before um, Facebook existed. Um, for the advertisers out there, this actually meant that obviously nobody was seeing their adverts and it's estimated that it was about $545,000 an hour uh, in advertising revenue that Facebook were losing. So nearly quarter of a million um, dollars an hour, so that's two and a half million dollars they probably lost, uh, which isn't a huge amount when you, they've lost 50 billion off their stock price, but there you go. So um, it wasn't malicious, um, but it probably is gonna happen again. Um, but there you go, uh, that's why it happened and um, that's some of the effects. Um, what happens when a drone show goes bad? So we've seen a few of these um, on very, very small scales, um, but this was a, um, a drone show in China uh, that had a big outage. So as you can see, there are just drones falling out of the sky. Now these drones are, are not exactly light. They weigh about 300 grams or slightly over that, which is about the same as a can of Coke. So imagine a can of Coke falling out of the sky onto your car or onto your head. Um, that is uh, interesting. Um, so this is what happened. Um, now, why did this happen? Not really sure. Was it just a technical failure? Or was it, as has happened in a previous drone show, when a couple of, or about 17 drones fell out of the sky? This is hundreds falling out of the sky. In a previous drone show, it was a competitor who, who lost the pitch to, to actually put on the drone show, was pointing essentially a jamming device at, at specific drones. Now, this looks far more significant. Um, I mean, it could also be the same thing. Um, but this is kind of interesting that uh, up until this point, we haven't really seen this major outage on drone shows. Um, each one of these drones that fell out of the sky, um, I'd be very surprised if they made it back to their uh, their owners. Um, they're probably going to be a, a nice, neat 700 quid gift to a lot of people. Um, and there are probably a, a thousand of these drones going on anyway. So there you go. Um, that's what happens. Um, more of this apocalyptic nonsense uh, in the future when it happens again. Um, YouTube. Uh, this is kind of kind of a same old, same old, but it's also just a little bit of an update. So um, this is um, if you've seen video action campaigns. This is these are the the interstitials you get before you watch a YouTube video. So you'll get the you can skip it in five, four, three, two, one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those those video campaigns. Um, Google have now made a specific connected TV. Um, offering around this. So um, they know specifically that connected TVs are watched by a bunch of people. I think there was something like 120 million people in the US each month watch YouTube through a connected TV. So it's a very specific audience. So you might not want exactly the same ads that you run on mobile or desktop to be running on connected TVs. So now it's actually, it's a buyable segment. So it works pretty much the same. Obviously they don't want you to click on the ads because that will just interrupt the, the viewing, which they don't want. So um, what they uh, rely on is if you see in the, in the bottom um, left corner of the TV, a, a prominent URL. Um, what you're supposed to do is see the advert and go, oh, that's really interesting. I'm going to go to 
corner.com and then you pull out your phone or your laptop and you go and search for it. So it's it's sort of clunky, um, but I think the major point is, is they're seeing, as we've seen with the, as I say, the Amazon Omni and the Sky Glass, um, the connected TV is actually um, becoming more and more of a, a useful space for A, advertisers and B, consumers to connect. Um, so there you go. So now you can buy video ads specifically on connected TVs and the context that that has is up to you. So do you run the same advert when you know there are people in the living room with a slightly different context rather than on a bus? There you go. Um, and finally, uh, hamsters trade, or a hamster, uh, this is uh, Mr. Gox the hamster, is trading cryptocurrency. And not only is he trading cryptocurrency, it's doing better than the FT100, uh, uh, the Dow Jones, uh, the S&P 500. Um, so, um, yeah. That's kind of neat. So how's this working? Uh, so as you can see, the wheel in the background, uh, when it spins in the wheel, it chooses a cryptocurrency. As you can see, it's, um, say, ADA, for instance. Um, there's Link, and there's a Litecoin, there's Ethereum, there's Bitcoin itself, um, there's Tron, there's all sorts of, there's 30 Bitcoins it can choose. So when it spins the wheel, it chooses a cryptocurrency, um, and then whether it buys or sell um, is whether it goes through a tube or not. So it buys in $20 increments. So if it just keeps trucking through the buy tube, it will <laughs> keep sort of keep buying $20 worth of, say, ADA, uh, for instance, um, and then it might sell them. So the amazing thing is at one point it was 50% up. So as a, as a trader, being 50% up is absolutely incredible. Um, when I actually did this yesterday, it was 24% up. So it's actually, it's, it's uh, poor old Mr. Gox has had a bit of a run on selling coins that it shouldn't have really sold. Um, however, it's better than your average day trader on the uh, on cryptocurrency, which I think is, <laughs> which I think is really interesting. Interesting. It's basically outperformed nearly everything. Um, there you go. So uh, well done, Mr. Gox. And I think the really cool thing as well, this is streaming on Twitch as well. So uh, at any one point, uh, should uh, Mr. Gox be up and active, uh, you can go and actually watch uh, him buy and sell cryptocurrency. So um, if you probably want to make more money than you're probably doing on your cryptocurrency, maybe tune into Twitch and whatever Mr. Gox does, you do as well. Uh, by the way, this is not financial advice, clearly. Um, but there you go. Uh, well done, Mr. Gox. With that, we are done. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was interesting. And I will speak to you again next week.